Hey everybody, how's it going? Earlier this year I did a video that says, Congratulations Apple for doing a good thing. Apple helps independence buy OEM parts. Many of you said that I was wrong for congratulating Apple. If you go through the comments, you'll see this isn't right to repair. This is a PR stunt. Apple is trying to get ahead of right to repair legislation, which may be more intrusive to their bottom line, and that this is just something that they're doing so that they can tell their lobbyists, to tell senators, look, there's no reason for right to repair because we helped them already and we sell parts, and that I was wrong. And here I must indeed admit that when I made that video, I was very wrong. Very, very wrong. I think that anytime somebody takes a step in the right direction, it's important to notice it, to reinforce it, to give them a hug, to pat them on the back and say, you did a good job, thank you, please continue doing this into the future, to show your appreciation when someone does what they're supposed to. They are not. So if you want to realize just what a joke this program is, you can skip to this timestamp up here if you do not want to watch the whole thing and you don't want to hear about the experience. But if you want to hear just how many roadblocks Apple puts up to keep people from getting into this program, before you hear just how useless the program actually is, please do listen to the whole thing. First thing I want to say is thank you so much to the individuals that signed a non-disclosure agreement and said, screw the non-disclosure agreement. I'm willing to risk legal action being taken against me simply so I can share this with Lewis and Lewis can upload it. I got the green light from several people after they signed an NDA to share this because it was more important to them that the world know that this program is garbage than that their company actually retain solvency. Thank you. You are doing a great thing for the business and for the right to repair movement, and we all appreciate it. That being said, let's get to the fun part here. Someone has been emailing me back and forth. Actually, a lot of you have been emailing me back and forth, but this is the best one. This is uh, this is the experience that it appears many of you are having, but this is simply the best documented version of it. It says, Apple Experience trying to become third-party repair shop. August 29th, I contacted Apple requesting to join their newly announced independent repair provider program. September 10th, I received a pre-screening application to fill out, which was filled out and returned on September 12th, two days later. September 13th, I received an automated email from Apple stating the following. Please provide all documents required as outlined on page one of the IRP program overview and pre-screening application. Note, all requested documents were submitted. September 14th, received an email with the pre-screening application again and immediately replied with the resubmission of all requested documents. September 16th, to received an automated response from Apple stating that they had received my application and that I would receive a response in two weeks. October 14th, received an email from Apple requesting information already submitted three times, pictures of my establishment. October 18th, received an email from Apple stating they would like to send me additional information but require an NDA to be completed and would be coming in a separate email. November 7th, received the NDA from Apple, completed and returned it to Apple. November 8th, Received a sample agreement and sample prices from Apple to review, and if I decided to fit my business model, I needed to fill out a service provider application. This was filled out and submitted. November 10th, received an email from Apple stating that if my application was approved, I would need to fill out an online United States Apple authorized service provider agreement, which was promptly filled out in advance to try to save time. November 10th again, received an email from Apple stating that the online U.S. Apple authorized service provider agreement was received and would be reviewed in five to seven days. If approved, I would have to fill out the U.S. Apple authorized service provider agreement. November 12th, received an email from Apple with a request to fill out direct service documents, which was immediately completed. November 12th, received an email from Apple thanking me for filling out direct service document and letting me know if approved and signed by Apple, an email will be sent to my email address with instructions on how to download a copy of the fully executed agreement and any related documents. November 12th, received approval from Apple and was requested to download the executed document within 360 days, which was already done two steps earlier, but did it anyway. November 20th, received an email from Apple congratulating me in being approved into the Independent Repair Provider Program direct with Apple. The same email stated that I would receive another email with a link to the website that I was supposed to order part from. November 20th, received an email from Apple with a link to register for GSX, Global Service Exchange website, which was immediately filled out. November 22nd, received an email from Apple stating my GSX access is complete and that I would have to set up two-step verification if supported by my country. After attempting to do so, their system asked me to answer security questions that were never set up with my new Apple ID account required to log in to GSX. This is where the fun part goes because he had been emailing me back and forth several emails, probably close to a dozen, between November 22nd and December 21st 
and said, after 22 email exchanges, Apple could not fix or reset the security questions on my new Apple ID, so it had to be abandoned and a new Apple ID had to be created. I was finally able to log in with a new Apple ID to order the order parts page, but there are no instructions on how to find part numbers or get access to training, etc. After a few hours, my account was locked until I enabled two-step verification on my new Apple ID. However, this only works with an Apple device since Apple removed the ability to do this via an automated phone call. If I use my personal iPhone, it will commingle my personal Apple ID with my business Apple ID. This is one of the issues that happened between November 22nd and December 21st. So now I am locked out and unable to purchase parts. I sent an email to my Apple contact and I'm waiting for a reply. December 22nd, set up two-step verification with my iPhone anyway, and it seemed to work. Still unable to log in to Atlas for training, unable to find part numbers needed to order parts. This is four months, four months in, and he still can't get this done. Basic training takes less time than this. To replace a battery, here's the best part of it all. Here's where this program is just a complete, utter dumpster fire that is designed to be useless so that nobody uses it. To replace a battery, the following procedure must be followed. 1. Open a customer's phone. Take note of the EEE number. Clean off water seal, close phone, and inform the customer. A. If there is an aftermarket battery, the battery from Apple will cost $101.25. That's not what this guy's marking it up to his customer. That's his price to buy the battery from Apple. $101.25. B, if there's an original battery, it will cost $25, my cost before markup, plus the glass seal and labor. C, their glass seal is sold in packs of 30 for $23. Fair enough. Number two, I cannot order the battery until I have the EEE number, so now the customer will have to wait one to two weeks for me to get the new battery and seals and then come back for the actual replacement. Three, I have to do the job twice, once to see the battery and once to actually replace the battery. The customer has to pay more for the OEM parts and take two trips to the shop and have the phone without a seal for this time. Four, if I don't get the EEE number or order the wrong part, I eat the cost and pay full price for the part since I won't have a part to return. I'm not going to be using this. I'm glad it only wasted four months of my time. I have two iPhones to replace batteries for and both are family members. Who do you like for a battery supplier? The first things first, if a customer shows up at my store and asks me to replace the battery, I have to open the phone, take down the number, close the phone, then order the battery, which is going to take one to two weeks for it to get here. So if a customer walks in the store right now, I'm able to purchase, let's say, 5 or 10 or 15 batteries because I like to stock parts, as I mentioned in this video about seven years ago, that if you're in a business where you replace iPhone screens, stock them. If you're in a business that fixes motherboards, stock the chips. If you're in a business that replaces MacBook screens, stock the screens. Your customers will be happier with fast turnaround. Slow turnaround, aggravated customers. MacBooks, Pros, these items, when people spend three to $4,000 on a luxury computer, they're often doing that because they use it for their business and it needs to work all the time. People that I was dealing with originally in the studio business, they were using them for recording sessions where they were charging people lots of money or they were composing their own music, which made them lots of money. They couldn't afford downtime, so you stock parts. You can't do that with this program. You need to have the customer come into the store, say my battery's not working, Open the phone, remove all the liquid proofing so that for the one to two weeks while the battery is being ordered, the customer's phone is now, if it rains outside, it's dead. Wait for that battery to come in one to two weeks, then put it in the customer's phone. And if the customer had an aftermarket battery in the phone, that battery that you thought would cost you $25 is now $101.25. So Apple will charge you $25 for the battery if you return the old one but they will charge you $101.25 if you don't return the old one. This is insane. If you're saying that I'm returning the battery to you in order for me to get the battery for $25, the maximum that that battery could have a trade in value for if it was OEM effing new with zero cycles would be $25. But if I don't return the original battery, you're going to charge me $101.25 for the battery. So let's say you have a customer that comes to you and says, my battery's not working well on this phone that I purchased used. And you say it's going to be 50 bucks to replace the battery because you're assuming the battery will be 25. And then you get the battery in, you go to send the battery back to Apple and they go, uh, 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 that's an aftermarket battery. Now you got to pay 101.25. So now not only do you have to waste one or two weeks of the customer's time, which is going to piss them off, but you also lost $50 doing the repair which pisses you off. That's just terrible. There's no reason to charge a customer four times the price if they don't return the old one. If you have an advanced RMA system with Newegg, even they don't do that. If you buy RAM 
and then the RAM doesn't work, so you ask for an advanced RMA, if you don't return the old part, they don't charge you more than 100% of the part that you ordered. That's just not the way this works. If I order $50 of RAM and I want to do an advanced RMA return and I don't send back my bad RAM after they send me the good RAM, the max that they charge me is, is 50 bucks extra. They don't charge me three times the, or four times the cost of the item. $101.25 for a battery is just fucking obscene. You, you can't say that that battery is worth that much. I mean, that's ridiculous. That, that's fundamentally ridiculous. There's, there's nothing special about that battery. And further, the pricing on everything else in this program is just... It's just trash. It's fundamentally trash. A, a screen that is not even AMOLED. This is $117 if you return the old one for an iPhone 6S. $148 if you don't return it. Let's just take a look at something like uh, how competitive this is. So if we go to eBay, you could get a used iPhone 6S for $109. $129. <laughs> This phone is worth about what they're charging for the screen by itself, which is just, again, lunacy. There's no money to be made here. And just, it's even if we're avoiding the talk of money, why should it take a customer two weeks to have a battery installed in their phone? That's insane. Even when you go to the Apple store, they don't do that. If you go to the Apple store and you set an appointment to replace the battery in your phone... They just replace the battery in the store. They don't make you wait two weeks. Imagine if I was a pizzeria and I wanted to have a world where if you ask me for a pizza, it's $5 and it'll be ready in five minutes. But I force everybody else to wait two weeks to get a pizza if they go to another pizzeria. The best part of this program, you can't buy charge ports. You can't buy earpieces, speakers and stuff like that. This is screens and batteries. If a customer comes into your store and says, oh yeah, I'm having issues hearing people. It's been muffled ever since I dropped the phone. Nope, nothing you can do. If a customer says, my rear camera is not working very well, can you replace it? In this program, nothing you can do. If a customer walks into your store and has a bad charge port on their iPhone 7, you can't buy that charge port for $5 and replace it for the customer for 75 you need to replace the phone and tell that customer it's going to be three or four hundred dollars or more. You can't even replace a charge port. If the headphone jack is not working in an iPhone success, you got to replace the phone. And let's not even get into MacBooks because this doesn't even include MacBooks. Where is MacBooks? Where is the Mac Mini? Where is the iMac? Where are the rest of the products that you sell? They're not here. And they're probably not going to be here. It took them four months to set this gentleman up with an account that, to my knowledge at this point, still barely works. It says, I'm still unable to log in for Atlas Training, unable to find part numbers needed to order parts. This guy started on August 29th. On December 22nd. It's still not functional. And even if this was functional, he needs to tell a customer that to replace the battery in their phone, it will take two weeks, and you need to come to my store two times. This is done on purpose to ensure that independent repair is going to suck. If you make the independent option suck enough, then you'll get to keep people from actually seeking out independent repair. I don't run my business like this. Even as early as 2009, when I was dead broke, I decided I'm going to live in an apartment that is infested with termites rather than tell my customers, you're going to have to wait three to six days because I have to order a part. I was willing to make that sacrifice so that I could have an LP133WX1TLA1, a B154PW01, and a B154PW04 on the shelf at all times so that regardless what model MacBook a customer calling me had, I could say, I'm going to show up at your place and I'll replace the screen in 20 minutes or less. Be there in half an hour. That's important. And that's what matters to people in this type of business. Are you going to do a good job? Are you going to use good parts? And are you able to get it done in this amount of time? Because I don't have time to waste. I have a business to run. I have work to do. I need this to work, and I'm willing to pay you a premium if you're able to get it done. But if you're not able to get it done, I'm not going to use you. Even working out of that shithole, being that financially strapped, using a bed as a workstation, 
and sleeping outside of my apartment in the hallway because there was no space in my apartment for me to sleep once I had appropriated my bed as a bench, I was able to offer better service to my customers than someone could offer to customers right now if they had a million dollar store as a member of the Apple IRP program. That's pathetic. Who in God's name in 2019 is willing to wait one to two weeks to have the battery replaced and their smartphone when they walk into a brick and mortar store. It's one thing if you're a business doing this over the mail. It's one thing if you have to mail the thing back to China or Sweden or whatever to have it replaced by the manufacturer. But when you walk into a store in your neighborhood, do you seriously expect that for something that basic that it's going to take them two weeks? I realize I'm repeating myself here, and I realize that this video is almost 17 minutes long at this point, and that that's ridiculous. But this entire program is ridiculous. This was put into place so that it can look like Apple cares about the customer and independent repair centers when they don't. And if I hear a single Let's effing lobbyist uh, bring this up to a senator uh, um, at a hearing, uh, I will blow their spot up immediately and make them look so fucking stupid for the fact that they ever even remotely implied that this has anything to do with helping repair shops. I look forward to the next hearing. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something.